My name is Markus Möller. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer from Germany. I work there for Avanade. You can reach me on Twitter or via my blog. And the last line is only uh, in case you have some background noise again, which I cannot put on mute. So today, um, as already uh, announced in the intro, um, uh, I want to talk about a new capability of SharePoint Framework. Um, this was available or is available since only 1.11 um, to use SPFX for task modules in Teams, especially in messaging extensions. And I will also how to how simple it is from there to access the Microsoft Graph, uh, as we know from SPFX in general. So let's uh, switch to my short uh, demo scenario. Um, some of you might know this. I presented quite the same scenario seven weeks ago in the general dev call, and those time it was a normal Teams uh, Teams app, and that was a search-based messaging extension. And today I show this in an action-based SPVX variant. So in short, we have uh, some documents somewhere which need a review from time to time. I pointed out three ones here which never been reviewed and are due since a couple of days. And this is now what we want to communicate inside Teams. So we can uh, start our messaging extension, for instance, on the Compose bar here. And what we see now is the first task module um, developed or uh, rendered by SPFX. And there are our three documents, uh, which we already awaited. Uh, one is quite overdue. This is why I formatted a, a, a bit different, but we will pick this one. Select it with a double click. And there we are back in our communication um, with an adaptive card, which shows the details about the document together with two actions. The first action, the view action, quite boring, just opening an URL. The second one is much more interesting for us. This will put this document automatically on review, but not uh, the simple way, because when we click it, we will get another task module which will now gather some input from us. Uh, here we have a quite simple scenario. We only ask for a date for the next awaited review in the near future. We can pick one and kick it off with the review action. And now the, um, the uh, task module inside SPFX was writing this back via graph to the library, and we can already see this here over. Uh, a few seconds ago, where's my last review date? That's strange. But it should. There it is, yeah. Um, there it is, uh, new dates, and uh, that's so-called fine. So let's get back to the slides uh, because I want to show you how this works. So first, the question is, how does this get invoked? We have two solutions. We have a sm very small box solution, and we have a web part solution um, in SPFX. Um, in SPFX, we have our manifest, which points out the messaging extension as a so-called compose extension. And here, the most important thing is the task info notation and the URL. This URL you can see at the bottom as well. I point, pulled this out a bit to make this a bit more visible. This has some parameters. And here's uh, first to mention the team site domain. This is an automatic parameter resolved by Teams itself. So we do not really have to care for this. But the second one is what we have to care for. This is the component ID. And this component ID is exactly the same than our web part ID, which we know from our web part manifest. In our case, you have seen two task modules. So my solution contains two web parts. And uh, you will later see the second URL with a different component ID. But here for the moment, this is the first one. And this uh, tells Teams when someone invokes this messaging extension to render that specific SharePoint component. Once this starts, um, we can first detect if we are really in the right context. This can be done in the on init method with uh, yeah, this line especially, which um, shows that the app context application name, if this is Teams task module application, then we are inside a task module because um, this task module has no specific 
supported host property, as you might know from web part or Teams tabs or single page applications, this property supported host does not really matter in this case. So um, here we detect, hey, we are really inside a Teams messaging extension, taking this as a Boolean parameter and handing this over to our root React component where we can later execute our code or not if we are in the wrong context. Next thing is uh, once we have rendered our uh, task module, in this case with a, um, I use the Fluent UI list. You can see this here in the details list. Um, there's one method called item invoked, which is executed once the user double clicks an item. In that special, special case, I'm checking here, the already mentioned, hey, are we in the Teams messaging extension? And if so, we call from the Teams SDK, a submit task function and hand over our document item to this. And now we are switching the solution and coming to the backend to our bot solution, which is quite small. We only have one class with two functions, we will see. So the most of the logic in the SPFX stuff. What we are doing here in the first function, you cannot really see the name, but this is the messaging extension submit action, which is uh, executed because we just executed submit task. We will take some data from the item. For instance, here the uh, URL, where I shortened, by the way, the body here to uh, make this more visible and point out the important things. Um, we can create an adaptive card from this and insert for instance, a submit action, but not a normal submit action. We can classify this in the Teams case specifically as an MS Teams task fetch activity. And furthermore, we also once again hand over our item. And this is how the adaptive card comes back to our front end. You've seen this, looks like this. And now, we, in our case, or even uh, as to point out, this is a communication thing. So this can be also another user who can click on the review button. He will then get back to the second function in our backend bot solution. And this is, as we already pointed out, um, the task module fetch activity. First thing is, I already announced this. We have a second component ID here, which we included in our URL. I pointed this out again for better readability. And the second interesting thing in this time where I use uh, this quite the same URL structure again is that I'm additionally adding a custom property, which I can also do here in this case because here I can control the URL. So I can hand over my item ID back to the task module to the next one we will see and say, hey, we are now uh, concerned about item ID 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. And this, of course, is taken from the handed in item what we what arrived here. Now, second task module um, opened in Teams again. Once again, we are back in Sharp, inside SharePoint framework code. We render, in this case, only a simple um, form small date picker and the default button. The default button uh, is the only point to mention here on exec, uh, it executes the reviewed action. This action once again detects, hey, we are in a Teams messaging extension or not, calculates some dates, and finally initializes our graph task and sets the document to reviewed. And at the very end, it calls another submit task function, this time without a parameter. And this is, um, or this achieved that only the task module gets finally closed. There's no round trip to the server again. So the bot class will not be reached again with this action. Well, let's finally have a look into the graph service and point out some other thing. What we can see here is uh, I pointed out uh, you use the document, uh, the get documents for review function. The writing back uh, reviewed function is quite the same. What we first do is we retrieve a configuration from a parallel SP service controller 
I do not really want to go into details here because this is quite a simple operation. What I'm doing is, as I'm in the SharePoint framework context, I'm simply retrieving my parameters from uh, filled out tenant properties. This is an, quite an easy operation in, inside SharePoint framework. Inside a native Teams application, I would think about different options because there it would be much more complex to, uh, uh, to retrieve it from SharePoint tenant properties. And what I use, in fact, are two parameters here, my site ID and my list ID, which I need to um, retrieve my data from the right library. Finally, um, just as a wrap up, right, also a small diagram how this works from uh, from beginning from the invoke uh, from the invoke uh, operation over to the first task module, then into the backend bot component, um, back to the adaptive card, and then the final task and uh, the final task module. And uh, this thing, or uh, this demo, or uh, this uh, this code sample is part of a series that I wrote in my blog. Um, you might have seen, as I mentioned, seven weeks ago, I was presenting uh, in the general dev call a search-based messaging extension where the authentication took place in the backend via the bot channel. Um, then I wrote an additional uh, option where I used the action-based variant for this same scenario, and there the authentication took place in the front end via Teams SSO. And now today you have seen the SPFX alternative by authentication. Yeah, I think you haven't really seen something about authentication, but that is because uh, the graph handling inside SPFX is quite that easy. And I did not really point it out here because I think you have seen it a dozen of times in those kind of demos already. What I'm missing a bit and maybe my next step might be to write a small wrap up where I have a small side by side summary comparison and the recommendation to do this or that option in this or that scenario. Last not least, some resources. My blog post, which also points out to the rest of my series. Um, the sample is already available in the Teams uh, Dev Samples PMP repository. For those checking this out, forgive me, I need another PR. Uh, I checked this so because my code does look a bit ugly in terms of indention and so, so uh, I will uh, update this soon in my own repository. You can reach by my blog. It already looks a bit more cleaned up. And finally, there's also a small Microsoft documentation on this, how to expose a web part as a Microsoft Teams messaging extension on this with a quite popular sample behind. And therefore, I took some of uh, the shown things here, but not all of them. And that's from my side. So. Thank you. And if you have questions, feel free to use the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Marcus. Really interesting demo again uh, from the community. So thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for taking the time to do that.